Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, June the 4th. Today's topic is our featured teacher for the month, Justin Sleater. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us, and Paula Noggle. Susie is going to introduce Justin for us and then ask him the newbie question, if her mic works. Well, since Susie's having a problem with her microphone, I'm so sorry because she was the person who helped make all of this happen, connecting us with Justin and having him agree to come and present for us. So I'm just going to do a quick introduction myself so we can move right on. And I would like to let you all know that Justin currently teaches physical education, health, and technology in Springfield Elementary School for grades pre-K through 6th in New Jersey. He's been at that school for five years, but before that, he taught for five years at Mercy, Mercer County Special Services and Lambertville Public School. He is the brain, and I mean the brain and the inspiration behind Slow Chat PE and Slow Chat PE WordPress blog, which is the impetus for the Slow Chat. He's going to be telling us all about that um, when he shares with us today. He's also the co-creator of Boxer PE and the Boxer PE chat, and I'm imagining that some of you have started trying to use Boxer and uh, you'll be excited to hear some of the things he's doing with that. In the Voxer PE chat, there are over 500 PE teachers from all over the world. And just a little special tip here, he was his fifth grade chess champion. And even a bigger claim to fame, he ate a full pizza all by himself just to get a free t-shirt. So with that, I'd like to say welcome to you, Justin. And I'm going to advance to the newbie question. We always like to ask this question of our um, featured teachers because we know you're doing amazing things with technology. And we'd like to have you talk to us about what exactly does Web 2.0 mean to you? And why do you use these tools in your classroom? Sure. So first, thank you, Susie and Peggy and everyone else for having me and spending time, because that's always appreciated. And what is Web 2.0 to me? It, basically, it's using the Internet to bring people together. That, that's how I think of Web 2.0. So how do I, in my classroom, I like bringing in experts from the outside world. I've had uh, a guy teach my class from Saudi Arabia. I've done some Olympic stuff with, with different schools in Wales and Maine and different places. So for my classroom, I enjoy being able to, to bring in people and try to you know knock down those walls, as they said. And personally, I mean, Web 2.0 is professional development 24-7. It's being able to take my passion to the next level. Uh, at any time of the day or night, I connect with other educators and and have learned so much and learned where my weaknesses were as well. I think that's a, that's a big one because before I got connected, I kind of thought I was a good teacher, and I probably was, but I wasn't a great teacher. And, and when you don't know what's out there and what other people are doing and, and what you could do better, then you're kind of stuck. And then once I saw these amazing people, you know, you just get inspired. So for me, Web 2.0 is uh, how can I see and connect with the rest of the world and take my teaching and my passion to the next level. So today we will be going over some technology for the teacher. And again, I am a phys ed and health teacher and teach a couple classes in uh, technology as well. But I wanted to figure out for this webinar, how can we use technology as a teacher? Straight up, not just in the classroom, not just with our students, but all around. So then I started trying to go contact time, non-contact time, and I ended up using the Danielson model as a way of really encompassing the whole teacher. Now, 
it doesn't matter if you use the Danielson model or Marzano or a made-up model yourself. It, do, it doesn't matter at all what your model is. The only reason I went with Danielson is because it's what our school does. But it, it shows for, for a teacher all the different areas you need. Yeah, so the, the Danielson model for VM out there is an evaluation model that, that schools in New Jersey can choose from, and it's pretty popular in the United States. And it basically looks at all the different aspects of the teaching from, it has four ma main things, and we'll go over this in the webinar, I don't want to get too in-depth right now, but it breaks it down into four different sections, planning and preparation, classroom environment, instruction, and uh, professional responsibilities. And I'm going to show you how tech can impact each one of those. So no matter what you do, if you have any role in education, uh, this will be very useful for you. So there we go. Things to know about me. I love technology. And funny thing about this meme, that's my kitchen. That's my youngest son right there. I love this picture. It cracks me up. So I put that on. Next up, you'll probably figure this out soon. I have a very short attention span. I was one of those kids in school that couldn't stay focused for very long. If uh, ADHD was as popular back then, I probably would have that. But anyway, I just thought this was kind of funny. Next, love to move. And that's why one of the poll questions for you was about movement. And just because I love technology doesn't mean that I think technology is the answer to education or the silver bullet or the thing that we need to focus on all the time. We still need to remember uh, our basics about being a human. And part of that is that we need to be standing and we need to be moving. And a lot of times people think technology is sitting. And again, I'm going to show you how that's, that's definitely not true all the time. So yeah, PA these and Danison, absolutely good. So like Peggy said, currently teach health present technology, elementary school, so I teach kids three to thirteen. I run a blog. If you get a chance, you can connect with me later. I'm not too worried about any of this. Created a national lesson plan creator. We'll talk about that. Uh, for the phys ed and health, I am the technology chairperson for my state. And actually, I will be keynoting in Las Vegas that hopefully Johan will be hanging out in uh, September 30th, October 1st. I'll be a keynote, which is really, really cool. We'll talk about that, I believe, at the end. So, welcome to the future. The future is right now. Everything I wanted as as a kid, I could pretty much, except for like flying, like uh, ha having cars that could just fly when I'm stuck in traffic. Other than that, it's here. So if we're not embracing technology, then we're already behind. And everybody in this group already embraces it, or you wouldn't be here on a Saturday. So I don't have to preach to the choir too much on that. But if you do not believe that technology can improve you as a teacher, educator, anything in education, administrator, whatever it is, then basically this is what you'll be right here. One of these, I believe they call them knuckleheads. And to go back, for me, the, the thing I love about tech, this was me beforehand on my left, hot mess, as, as they would call it. Now with technology, much more organized. Uh, I'm a much better teacher, and we will talk about that. And yeah, anytime, we'll go back to the Three Stooges, because anytime we can talk about the Three Stooges, fantastic. And you know, they're from Philadelphia, so those Pennsylvania people out there. Uh, welcome. You are the home of the Three Stooges. So here we go for the Danielson model. This is what we were talking about, an evaluation model. But basically for me, I could have used any model. It doesn't, ma it doesn't matter what your model is. I wanted to just show how technology can impact you as a whole, not just in the classroom with your students. From the very beginning, when you're planning something, to the very end, when, when you're doing your end of the year reflections, and then you're looking at how did you improve. So we'll go over this. Also, this link to the cheat sheet for the Danielson model, for me, is very helpful. So if you want to get that on a tab, that's cool. If not, you don't need to, but it's very good. Thank you for putting that link up there. So domain one, planning and preparation. 
So this, uh, as a teacher, you know, is so, so, so important. I can have the best skills in the world as a teacher, have great relationships with my students, know my content inside and out. If I am not prepared, then I am not setting myself up for success. So that's that's the main one. And we're going to get into each of these strands. I don't need to read them off the slide there. So here we go. For our blogs, uh, for, for domain one, we have demonstrating knowledge of content and pedagogy. So as a teacher, we obviously need to sit there and, and figure out, are we up to date with our knowledge? And how do we show people? How do we continue that? So for me, I write my blog every week. Voxer is probably the greatest professional development tool I've come across right now. Uh, that's where I met Johan, I met Susie in there, uh, and I know Kim Ballard's in here somewhere. Basically, Voxer is a voice message app that allows me, with the click of a button, to get in touch with people anywhere in the world. It doesn't cost me any money, as long as I've data left on my plan from all the Wi Fi, I don't even have to worry about that. And I can have the greatest minds. I can ask them questions. Uh, one guy that I that I talk to somewhat frequently, his name is Jared Robinson out of Australia. Now he's probably the number one physical education technology specialist in the world. The dude creates apps. Is in technology the tech he creates, not just uses but creates, is absolutely amazing. Uh, he gets he hosts conferences, gets paid to keynote all this. I have him at the touch of a finger. I just go, boop, press a button, can talk to him whenever I want. Eric Scheniger's a, a big name in education right now. I have him on Boxer. I can hit a button and, and talk to Eric Scheniger, who people pay five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 to come to the conference. I'm able to talk to him for free. So I absolutely love Boxer. And again, I'm not getting paid by Boxer. just tell him. Over here, again, how do we step it up? Any presentations we can do to, to show what we're doing in the classroom, to stay current, and to have other people uh, see what other people are doing. I find that presenting is a good way to get to the conference for free. So I don't want to I don't want to pay for conferences. So some for phys ed are the PE Institutes in North Carolina. We talked about Q in Las Vegas, which actually I was asked to keynote through my connections I made on Boxer which is really cool. Um, Heidi Carr was one of the ladies who reached out and asked if I would do it. And that would have never happened if I stayed in my little silo in New Jersey. So that's really cool, and I'm able to get out to Vegas. But when you go to these conferences, now not only am I going to present, which is cool, people can either like or not like one, whatever. From there, I, I'm able to go to other sessions and connect with other people. So I'm staying current and relevant. So I think that's pretty cool. And again, uh, technology right there. If you're going to write for a journal, well, if you're going to be a, write for a journal in the article, you have to research it, uh, what you're going to do and cite your sources. Of course, we're going to be using EBSCOhost, bidme.org, which is a Chrome extension now, which is really cool. So again, technology is huge. And then the MOOCs, the massive online open courses, which are free. I mean, there's just technology impacts so much with knowledge. Uh, uh, it's absolutely amazing. There's so much knowledge. I can't even get it. I can't even. It blows my mind at how much I'm not even able. I don't have any time to do. That's how much knowledge is out there that I want to get to that I just can't. So it's fantastic. So for the next part, we're demonstrating knowledge of our students. So how could tech impact that? And underneath, I wrote modifications, differentiation. You have your IEPs, which are individual education plans for people out there, and also 504s, which are uh, strategies to help them cope in the classroom, but not as in depth as IEPs. So for me, one of the the great things for here is how I can demonstrate my knowledge of students. I can have my QR codes up in the phys in the gym or in help, and I have beginner, intermediate, expert kids come over with their iPads, they scan the QR code. And they go right there. Differentiation using technology. Does it get any easier than that? Um, again, Google Classroom. You could send out links to your level assignments based on, on you could click like seven, let's say you have 21 kids, seven are at your low, seven medium, seven high. You could click who you send the links to what, and then you can all have them go to where they need to. So I really love Google Classroom. Newzella is a really cool source for reading that 
you could the kids can choose their levels and you can set the levels up for them as well and that'll kind of go to their reading level and then of course we, we have Google Translate which I think is absolutely amazing that it'll translate from one language to the next in the click of a button so it's been, and then let's say kids uh, have a little problem with eyesight vision problems change your text highlight do whatever you need to do let's say kids can't type Google Voice now. You just click the microphone, they can talk, it goes right to the text, and vice versa. So there's there's really cool stuff going on. So yeah, we will talk about the Remind app as well as we fly along. Alright, next up. So now we're going to talk about setting our instructional outcomes. So for this, this is where the planning comes in. Alright, and we want to go for the planning phase. What I did was create, and again, when I say I, I use that very loosely because um, they, uh, this was a collaborative effort from their shared desktop. Where is my search application, share application, framework host. I just want to share my desktop. All right, let's see how that works. Here we go. All right, Ken, I want to make sure before I go crazy here. Can we see my desktop? Can somebody just write down if you can see the desktop or not? Nice, perfect. All right, so this is the National Lesson Planning Creator. And what's really cool about this is this was a collaborative effort from people all across the world that got together and said, hey, let's create a huge Google form. And we took national standards, because Ms. Ed also has national standards as well as every state um, pretty much has their own standards. And we created a Google form. So any grade you want, you go on here. I continue, it has the standards written down. So for there, there's five different standards we can choose from. You click the boxes that you want, and then you go on. I can click, and obviously I'm going to read these and know what I'm doing. And I know most of the standards now a lot better because of this. And then at the end, what's kind of cool is once you click the standards, you have the date, you have your grade level. It tells me any instant activities, which would be like uh, skill introductions, uh, phys ed teachers, skills, concepts, all this on there. Put the email address, and then this automatically runs the, um, it runs, uh, what is that app? Somebody, somebody can write that on the add-on, and I'm having a brain little meltdown right now about it. But they, then it'll email it to you right there. Yes, you can afterwards. I can have it. It is, what is it called? Um, what's the add-on? Autocrat. Good Lord. can't believe I can remember that. So then it comes out looking really, really sharp over there. So let me see if I can, if I can find this. Lesson Planner Creator 2, Merge Docs. Here we go. So it comes out a template. This should be, hopefully this is a good template. Yeah, and this is what it looks like when you're done. So it tells you the plan, the grade level, everything's filled out. This was just a test one I did. And it comes out looking pretty sharp. And then anyone in the world can access this for phys ed and health. So I thought that was pretty cool. And again, a bunch of people got it together. It took us, I don't know, probably 100 hours to get this bad boy done. And now all across the world, people can can use it. So I thought that was a really way for for us to do it. And anyone, you can make that for your own school. You don't have to do a huge one like this. Uh, also, another thing that's really cool, we talk about uh, a shared Google Drive. So again, if you haven't figured out the phys ed world and the health world, we are ahead of the game when it comes to collaboration. Uh, we're such a sharing community. So we got together and we said, you know what? We are going to um, we're going to create a shared Google Drive that's international. So these are people from all over the world that have shared things, that have shared their lesson plans, their resources, everything. And it's fantastic. I think we have 10 gigs of data, something like that in there. So really, really cool. Um, anyone can view it. Only people who direct message me and say, hey, I want to add to it. And if you look in here, I mean, augmented reality, we have a GIFs uh, folder, 
uh, a Google form assessment. I mean, all kinds of stuff. And this, this lady is a phys ed teacher of the year, Jessica Shawley down here. I mean, there's so many teachers in here that have done amazing things that are sharing everything for free. And that, for me, is huge for free. All right, next up. Uh, also, we could do a couple good things on here. Um, is this Twitter Google form? And again, when we talk about uh, assessments, I could go over a whole hour of different assessments to do. But this one was kind of cool, which which I liked. And the reason why I like the Twitter Google form, and this was from Adam Leveau, Mr. Adam P. out of England, and now he teaches in Saudi Arabia. He created this. And what's cool about this one, and I will show you this one more time. What's cool about this right here is he just put a Twitter image in a Google form. But what I love about it is watch the characters on the bottom. You can only get to 140, and then it'll tell you that, say, too many characters. So it's almost like you're tweeting. We did this with a Facebook thing, all, all kinds of different ones. So I thought that was kind of cool way to use to use that, and there's the Facebook one. So again, just different ways to use it. Next up, demonstrating knowledge of resources. So for us, uh, for, for the Danielson model, one of the big parts for demonstrating knowledge of resources is the, uh, getting speakers into your classroom. So I don't know if you follow Corey Graham, but Corey Graham runs a really cool thing called Corey Tellers. And she has people she Skypes into her classroom, and they read, they do different stories, they, do, they Skype in. It's really, really cool. So again, talk about a Web 2.0 tool right there. Uh, Education Skype is a great website for getting connected with people who want to, want to connect on different projects using you know, a, a Skype. I would highly recommend you go check out Education Skype. It's probably the biggest secret that nobody talks about with the most bang for its buck. It's just teachers out there that want to get together and want to do just really cool stuff. So mystery Skype people are out there. But more than that, it's like, hey, we have an idea. Uh, we want to do this. What teacher from what part of the world wants to join in? So go check out Education Skype. All right, next up, designing instructional assessments. Really cool. And I put a picture of the Parthenon down here because I just watched a TED talk about that and how they had to change the way that they made concrete for that. Um, uh, how every that was like a techno technological marvel right there. And it was art and design coming together. So I thought that was really cool. But different ways that we can use technology to impact our instructional assessments. We can use it for PDLs if we're going to do that, um, for student choice, for genius hour, innovative classroom with Don Rutrick, any of that stuff. Uh, you can use your iPads, social media, Twitter to get in there, make s'mores. I know Amanda Rogers in Texas makes s'mores, different slides, use graphic organizers, just so many different ways that we can use technology with assessments. And I don't think we need a lot of help over here. All right, this is going to be a cool one over here. And if you want to leave after this, I don't want you to, but we can. Designing student assessment. The reason why I say this is because this never-ending Google form, to me, is probably one of the cooler things out there that I've ever come across. Now, it, it came from the fact that I wanted to figure out a way to assess every class uh, and just quick assessments, quick formative assessments. And there was nothing out there. So Mr. Adam P. and I got together and we tried to figure out a way to, to do quick formatives. And we came up with this Google form. And this is how you do it. You're going to create the Google form. And you have question one is the objective. So every time you're going to write down, what is the answer over here to the objective? So what am I looking for? So if I'm a phys ed teacher, it might be, you know, is there opposite foot forward when they're going and doing the underhand role? If you are a classroom teacher, maybe you want to know uh, collaboration. Did they talk to, to a partner before writing something down? Whatever you want, you can write in your objective. Then right here, quick, 
four, three, two, one, absent or redo. Then I hit submit. When I do that, every I can do every person at one time and use the same form over and over and over again. And I made a form for the for every class, a different form. So if you're not into Google Forms, I highly recommend that because it's really cool. And then let me see. And I'll show you what it looks like, what you can do over here. So this is over here. I did a couple of fake ones for you, so we knew earlier. I, this is what it comes back as over here. Now, I don't like it really long, so I use something called transpose, and that just turns it to here. So now that same thing up there on the Google Form goes to the same spreadsheet every time. So I have this. Now look at how cool this is. I have all their names coming down. I could do the sum feature. I'll make this a little bigger so we could see it. You could use the sum feature or the average. And so now I have a quick grade if I need that for, um, for, uh, for my formatives. So again, Google Forms, so much you could do out there with it. This is absolutely fantastic. I have a video explaining how to do this from scratch. It is super, super easy. Each form takes me maybe a minute because when I'm importing each person's name, I just copy it from a spreadsheet and paste it in one square, and it automatically goes, individualizes all the students' names. So it's not like highlight, paste, highlight, paste. It takes me literally a minute to create the form. So really cool stuff going on over there with the Google form. So we're good. All right, for rubrics. Now, I don't want to talk too much about Orange Slice because I have it on good authority that you have the creator of Orange Slice going to be doing, is going to be doing one of these from what I understand. So Orange Slice is a rubric creator for students and for the teacher. And I think that is absolutely amazing because rubrics are, are fine. I know some people are against them. Some people are, are for them. But for me, it was always how do I, how do I create them? And then there's, you know, sites you go to rubric, whatever, .com, and it was just kind of annoying, to be honest. So what Orange Slice does, which is really cool, is it allows you to go to it allows you to go and create the the rubric, and then the students can highlight what they think their grade is. So here's the rubric creator. And again, I'll let the Orange Slice do a lot of this. The guy do this when he does his webinar. But it's a Google add-on off of a Google Doc. I put the rubric up top, so they have to read the rubric first. Then it comes down, and then I tell them, here it is. You're going to create a video doing your creative stages of addiction. And then I put the link to the stages, which is huge, because now I don't really need my kids to do a lot of the research. I'm going to bring the information to them. And this is one of the PBLs I did that was kind of cool. And underneath, I actually put their groups in an app called Team Shake. And then I took a screenshot of it and put it underneath so they knew their groups. But I had last name, so I couldn't put that on there. So again, um, Orange Slice, really cool if you're not familiar with it. Uh, watch that webinar when the gentleman comes on. All right. Uh, we'll talk about Seesaw more in the future. I'm not worried about that right now. So we are about 20 minutes in. If you are sitting down, you might want to stand up because we shouldn't really be sitting for more than 20 minutes. You can still listen and stand up, and you can stretch out a little bit. Again, things just to keep in the back of your mind. So that was domain one. And I know I'm kind of flying through this because I want to keep it to a decent amount of time. I'm not trying to. Get a, uh, get a two-hour webinar here, so we'll, we'll keep it done. And if you have any questions, always you can hang out with me later. You, you'll have how to reach me on social media. So now we're taking technology, and we have, um, yeah, and Go Noodle's cool too. We have the classroom environment. So we, we moved from planning, getting everything ready. Now we have the actual classroom environment. So how can technology benefit the classroom environment? I don't know if we, if a lot of people think about this. So here we go. And thank you for everybody just joining the session as well. So now, how do we create an environment of respect and rapport? So over here, what I do in the beginning of the year, and, and this is how I establish my relationships with the students to really get to know them, because 
I, I teach every kid in my school, and it's hard sometimes to really get to to understand each kid and talk to each kid. I just time is a huge problem. So over here, what I do is I take the um, I take a Google form and I ask them the questions for the Google form, and I go. What did you love about my class last year? What did you not love uh, for here? What did you would you like to take more ownership? Because I was trying to become more student-led classroom this year. Oh, uh, then I gave them a scale. Uh, what do you want to learn about this year? Because uh, you know if they're at summer camp or something like that, and they have some cool games, or I miss something, or they just have something I want to know. And then here's a couple big things. What is your favorite song? It's amazing how music gets people to come together. And I could tell when, and then I take the kids and I, I make playlists of their songs. I could tell when a kid's favorite song comes on the playlist. You know, it just helps that relationship. And then over here is a big one. What do I need to change about myself to make me a better teacher? I want to know for my kids. I'm, I'm a sarcastic individual. Uh, I know everyone on, on Twitter says we, we shouldn't use sarcasm. Uh, unfortunately for them, I don't really care what they think. I, I like sarcasm. I'm not using it to put kids down. But if there was a problem and somebody says, uh, and somebody says, hey, and yeah, I do have one for the end of the interviews. Um, See, so Saul, we'll talk about there is no limit of storage. It's five minutes of video at a time. But again, if somebody says, I didn't like when you said this or did this or uh, whatever it is, I'll try to change my teaching for them. So I feel like for me, administration never does that to teachers. They, they never find out the, the, the cultural temperature of, of their staff. But I want to find out for my students. Do you like what I'm doing? Do you not like what I'm doing? Um, you, you know, and that's one way to do it. So over here, I'm reading a social justice book online. So again, technology. Puts it in there, and if you like book books, fantastic. Me too. Usually, online books are cheaper, so that's uh, there. And then we talked about culture checks. All right, here we go. So when we talk about establishing a culture for learning, so we, when I'm using my cheat sheet right now. It says students are actively engaged and care about what they are doing, not going through the motions. So how do we make students care about what they're doing? Now we talk about authentic audience. I don't want to just be their audience. When we talk about blogs, when we talk about Seesaw, uh, and we talk about people reaching outside of the classroom, now we have an authentic audience. When we team up with students from other schools, suddenly what they're doing is much bigger than just my classroom. It's more than I'm doing this just for a grade or I'm doing this for you. So again, how do we use technology? Right there, Google Hangouts, you can team up with companies, you can make your YouTube videos, Skype with other schools, Google Hangouts, whatever it is. Uh, we've done blogs before to reach out. Anything to, to make it much better uh, of a learning opportunity where they want to do something more than just, I have to do it because Mr. S told me to. I'm trying to get away from that. All right, here's the big one. Uh, social justice book over there is any book that deals with social justice. So right now I'm reading, uh, it's called Social Justice and Physical Education. It's a collaborative, collaborative book with, I don't know, about 20 authors from Canada and the United States. And I'm going over that. And it breaks it down into uh, all these different groups that have an imbalance of power. So there's a chapter on Hispanics. There's a chapter on Blacks. There's a chapter on LGBT. QIA, I think that, that was the, what the letters they went with. So there's all these different chapters on there of uh, what are those groups like, how are we marginalizing them, uh, or otherizing them as well, and then uh, how do we include them. So that's what, for social justice, it's always something to be in the back of our minds. Do we really understand the kids that are in our class? So for managing classroom procedures in here. So for us, if you're picking a kid, um, if you're picking a kid in class, you can use Team Chic. It's, a, it's an app. It's a couple bucks on there, but it's so worth it. And for, for making teams, you can put it in there, and then you just take a screenshot, send it out for Google Classroom. Here are the teams. And then also, you can also balance the teams. So 
for phys ed, uh, I might go by athletic ability. All right, I want to split up, let's say, these four sports athlete stars, and I want to split up so they're not on the same team. You could do that in your classroom the same way. Let's say we have these four kids who you know are going to do uh, the bulk of the work or understand the directions a little quicker or are good helpers, and you want to split them up. You can give them more weight in the team shake app, and then they'll split them up on the team. So it's really cool. Random randomnamepicker.com or something like that is a really good one. Um, you could do timers all the time. I actually, one of the easiest ones to use technology for timers, take your phone and just hold it and say, set a timer for five minutes. It's that easy. I use that all the time, whether I'm cooking hamburgers or I'm setting transition times in class. Uh, I love it. You know, if you want, all right, you have one minute to do this. Set a timer for one minute, and then Siri sets the timer, and we're good to go. So I, I, technology can really help with your classroom procedures. When we talk about managing our student behavior, yeah, Team Shake's an app on the iPad. So if you look that up, uh, I don't know if it's in the Google Store or not, but Team Shake's an app. So over here, managing student behavior. I wrote Class Dojo down. I'm not a big fan of Class Dojo. I feel like it's operant conditioning. I feel like the teacher's in control. If you're not doing what the teacher asks in a timely fashion, the way the teacher wants it, they click it, and then, oh, you hear the thing. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Class Dojo. There are people who use it without letting the students really know, and then parents can log on and communicate that way. And Class Dojo, I think, is opening up to blogs and some other stuff. So, again, if you use it in your classroom, that's fine. I'm not going to tell you what to do or what not to do. But just personally, from what I see, for the most part, I'm not a huge fan of Class Dojo. But I know it is a way that a lot of people are using technology to manage student behavior in your class. Uh, gamification. This is a huge one. And if you're not familiar with Tech the Teacher, yes, Makisha, exactly. Pavlov's dogs. Absolutely. That's what I was. That that's what makes me think of that every time I hear the noise when you click that Class Dojo. So Chris Avilas goes by Tech the Teacher on Twitter. He's amazing. The dude is brilliant. He came up with a never fail Google form where if you get the answer wrong, it sends you back to the video or the source to read it again and then you take it again. Um, I would highly recommend you, you get with him. But he is a gamification expert. And again, real quick, the difference between gamification and game-based learning is we're not learning through games. You're setting up your classroom as a game to level up in different things. So uh, Chris Aviles is a really cool dude. He set his classroom up in the coolest way. He gave out an award, and again, you get points for everything, called the Iron Bladder, where if you didn't go to the bathroom all year, you got like an extra 100 points towards leveling up in his class, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, I, if you're interested in that, hit him up. He will talk to you. He's fantastic. I really, really like that dude. And Joe, yeah, you, you can give positive points in Class Dojo too. So don't. I, I don't mean to put Class Dojo down like that. You, it can be used well, but I just see it misused a lot. That's all. Um, so if you were going to prepare your own gamification, you would just set up your class so that everything is point based. If you hand in your homework, here's your points, and then when you level up, you would get you know, whatever it is. Um, uh, Classcraft is something some people are using for gamification. Again, I'm not really endorsing that because last time I checked, you could pay to get points in there, and that seems kind of against the thing, but that's what some people are using out there. But again, using technology to manage student behavior. And I'll talk a little more about that in another slide about Seesaw and how I use it. I will get to Seesaw because I fully endorse Seesaw 100%. All right, so when we talk about organizing physical space, when I go back to my cheat sheet for the Daniels and bring it up, it says classrooms organized for effective teaching, it's safe, but also, it doesn't say in this one, they want students to have a say in your thing. So again, yeah, so Sophia uses Class Dojo for 15 second movies. And again, I'm going to show you how Seesaw blows Class Dojo away. Like, you might get rid of Class Dojo after I show you about Seesaw if you're not familiar when it comes to how, how parent engagement through videos and stuff. And I have some really cool stuff going on. So, anyway, uh, for this, 
we talk about the cemetery effect. I know Nick Enlick loves that. Uh, this was by Thomas Murray. Uh, for here, you could take a picture of the class and coach note, and you could draw different things. You could have students rearrange the classroom using it. Uh, and then for here, I'm going to do a little screen share, and we're going to do the share the the link for arrange your room. Now, my wife told me about this, and arrange your room is a website that I kind of made uh, or that my wife told me about. Here we go. And I don't want to show the image. Where you can make, you can have a, a visual of your room and you can put stuff on there. So you can draw your room. I did a fake mock-up of my gym. Set the room type. You can do walls, doors, windows. You can put structures in there. Like, let's say, I don't know. Um, I know they had desks in there. But let's say you had, uh, I don't know, a fireplace. You can put that in there. I know we don't have fireplaces in our room. Anyway, I was grasping for straws. But these are desks. And then with, on here, you can put different desks and stuff. And you can have your kids do it. And what's cool is 3D view. So, again, we could kind of flip it around. You can look. Um, this is a TV over here in case you can't tell. That's a better angle for the TV. You can put desks. And you can have your kids actually create your room. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing on there. Um, so again, arrange your room. There you go. So yeah, if you could put that on there, and I, I'm pretty sure it's just like arrangeyourroom.com, but we'll put it on there. Oh, Mr. Anlick, welcome. So again, we are done too, I believe. So again, if you want to stand up, stretch a little bit. I know we've been sitting for a while. If we were doing a webinar, maybe I would try to do a couple visual things, but uh, for this, if you're on your phone or laptop or Chromebook or iPad, walk around, go get yourself a drink, stretch out, keep your uh, up. All right. Now we are halfway done here. Done everything. Now we're going into Domain 3 instruction. Uh, I thought this little thing up here is pretty cool. Uh, where Facebook's killing me to pull communication like. So this is going to be the crux when we talk about how how we use technology in teaching. Most of us go right to domain three. We think that. But obviously, we went to one and two. And I'll show you four is like some of the outside professional development stuff. So we are moving on. Communicating with students. So for communicating with students, Google Docs. I tell a kid over here, um, if you have anything you ever want to tell me, they don't have email addresses because my kids are obviously, you know, three, three to 13, they fall under there. But we do have, we're a gas school. Create a Google Doc and share it with me. So all you have to do is start the Google Doc, put my name on it, share it with your parents, your, the, the principal, I don't care, whatever you want, or write me a note. Now it's right there. It's not like it's anything that's a secret. It's once it's on the internet in, through the Google Apps for Education, I can't get rid of it. I can't delete anything. They can always trace it, which for me, I really want. I want that student communication to be there so that way if a student says, oh, he said this or whatever. No, it's right there. You, you can't lie about that. But for me, I want to know, all right, you have a game. Sure, tell me the rules of the game. Tell me before the class so I can get the equipment ready. I'll figure out how to modify the game to make it hit whatever standard that I want, and then you're good. I know we talked about this, Remind um, and Class Messenger. Now, I know a preschool lady, she, she puts it out to the Remind app. That's more for the parents, but for the kids, especially um, as you, if you're in the middle high school level and phones and texting, you don't want the kids to know your phone number. So now you use Remind Class Messenger, either one of those. You get your message out to everyone at once. Yeah, and you can do it with parents, and we'll get to that as well uh, for the parent communication. But for kids, the main point is you don't want them to have your phone number. And yeah, Edmodo is fantastic over there, Joe, as well. A big fan of Edmodo, and it's free. Uh, we also know about email. This one's kind of interesting that people don't think about. Twitter, take a pic of the homework. Tweet it out. So your kids with ADHD or, or unorganized or whatever or didn't write the homework down on their assignment, didn't know, or they're absent that day, I didn't know. Take a picture of the homework assignment and tweet it out. I had a field day coming up on Monday. Uh, I sent a letter home to every parent. We know that from the book bag to the, to the house, things disappear. There, there's magicians out there. You never know. So what I did was I took a, a picture using Jing which is really cool, it's free, uh, took the image, put it on Twitter, 
here's what you need for field day. Bring a towel, change your clothes, blah, 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 blah. And I tweeted it out there, and you can put it on Facebook, too, and you should sweep do it both at the same time. So, um, yeah, any of that stuff is fine. And, and, again, for me, not a big fan of Snapchat or Instagram. Uh, I just think that th those mediums aren't, aren't really – what I like. And I know a lot of teachers are using Snapchat. The kids are using Snapchat and we want to meet the kids where they are. I just get a little leery of that. And Instagram for me, I just like that for my personal stuff. That's just a me preference, but just be a little, little thanks. Uh, do all the students in class have smartphones? Yeah, true. That's all the things you gotta, you gotta worry about. Uh, for using questioning and discussion. So in here, how are we going to use tech to go from the step up. Nicholas Emlick in here, uh, he could talk about, I think he's the one who told me about these writing prompts. And uh, for the writing prompts, there's a website that'll actually give you the writing prompts. So yeah, if they're under 13, you wouldn't use the social media. But if you're a Google Apps for Education school, then you would put it out through Google Classroom. So again, I, I, that was more for the kids over 13 years of age you're going to use social media for it. But hopefully you're using Edmodo or you're using uh, your Gav school and you go from there. Uh, so Padlet, and I would imagine a decent amount of you know about Padlet, but what I really like about Padlet for me is everybody can respond at once. So with Padlet, what I'll do is if I have different teams coming on, uh, while two teams are playing, if one team's sitting, instead of just sitting, now I'll put out a question through Google Classroom, and I'll have this. So this was one of them. What strategy worked the best when you and your partner were tagging the person in the middle? So instead of labeling the pathway, I label it with a question. Now everyone can use it. So if you're not familiar with Padlet, it's another free thing. It works really well with Google. You can use it. Um, with your Google Classroom if you want, or you could just create a Padlet, send a link out, however you would send the link. It's a, it's just a gray background. You double click on the background, a box comes up, I'll write my name, and then for here, I'll write, I don't know, Dodge and Duck, I don't know, whatever, I'm just being stupid. Do it post it, just click on the gray outside, now it posts. You could save these uh, in here, so from there, you can save them as an image, a PDF, Excel, and then I put them right into the Google Classroom folder. So I love Padlet, uh, Mr. Laveau, Mr. Adam P.E. If you get a chance, check him out. I steal a lot of tech from him. He's, a, uh, he's an innovator. He's the, the lead on the pencil, if you ever saw that image. And he taught us about Padlet, and Nick Enlick is in here. We all did our classes together, and we... Um, he, he taught Nick and my class together, and he used Padlet. So it was cool seeing a class from Pennsylvania and the stuff from there. So if the kids don't have the equipment, so if you don't have, I mean, we have Chromebooks, but if they don't have iPads or Chromebooks or whatever, then you obviously wouldn't use Padlet, or you would try to get as many as you can, and, you know, they would do them together. So Tyler and, you know, Mary together would, would do an answer. And then you have to fundraise and get yourself some, some stuff. If I was a classroom teacher, I'm going to be honest, uh, I, would be buying, I would be buying tech. I think that's more important right now than anything else. So I would use my own money. If you want to use your GoFundMes or you want to do your donors choose, there's people out there that are willing to support your classroom. you got to get on it. Um, the only problem is do you have the infrastructure? Is your Wi-Fi set up? Do you have your points? All right. So next, we want to engage our students. So how do we engage them using technology? Well, the first thing is engage them once you know them. So Google Forms, over here, another one, you could ask them, what are you watching on TV? What's the music you're listening to? Uh, you know, maybe once a month. How are you liking my class? So once you understand them, then you can tailor it. So Kahoot's kind of a cool game. You put, you put out the question, the answer, you can use that. Uh, I really like this flippity. Now, flippity.net is, I was scared. My wife just showed up and didn't even know she was there. Anyway, flippity.net is a really cool way. It's like a Jeopardy board. So here we go. You, This is all set up, and they have some really cool stuff. 
you make your own questions and everything, but it's all set up in a spreadsheet, and then they turn it into this. So you only need a smart board for this. And I break the kids up into teams, and then we go. And they choose whatever they want. Uh, water, so we'll do water for 500. What are the three states of water called? So anyone out there want to tell me, what are the three states of water called? Does anyone know this? Anyone? Anyone want to write the answers? See uh, what you check for understanding here. Solid, liquid, gas, but what would they be called? Those are the three states. What are they called, though? So what are the, you're absolutely correct with solid, liquid, gas, but of water, not just what are the three states. So what would they be? So what would solid water? There we go. Water, ice, water, vapor. Very nice. Patty would get the 500. She's on yellow. Congratulations, Patty. Boom. And we're good to go. So flippity.net, they have cards you can make. It's free. It is a fantastic site. Got to give a shout out to Mr. Vaughn, my superintendent for this. He's the one who taught me about it. I absolutely love flippity.net. Highly recommend you check that out. So, yeah, you can use it for any subject. I mean, there, there's, it's really cool. Um, quizzes is another one kind of like Kahoot. Uh, for debates, you can use Google Classroom, Edmodo, all, all different stuff over here. And to be honest, you probably get overloaded with how to engage students in learning through tech. I don't have to do a lot. All right, next, using assessment in instruction. Now, this right here is where we're getting the seesaw. Now, I love seesaw. If I could, I would take out stock in seesaw if it was a publicly traded company. I think seesaw is the, the, the greatest thing to enter my phys ed and health room since the Internet. That's how strongly I feel about, about um, yes, I'm going to leave that, uh, about Seesaw. So for Seesaw, when we go, oh, here we go. I should have my links under here. Are my using videos are here? Yeah, so Peggy should be taken over here. We're going to watch a couple quick videos on here. Yeah, flippity.net. So Peggy, if you can, can you show the videos of how I use Seesaw? And hopefully you'll still be able to hear me talk because I don't want to watch too, too long of them. But Seesaw is free. You get five minutes of video per time that you can upload. Um, it doesn't go public. Parents can sign up for it. Uh, it is really, really, really cool. I, I can't begin to tell you how versatile. They have a blogging feature. You can send links out through Seesaw. Uh, here we go. So Peggy's going to be showing this. This is um, parent communication with Seesaw. So again, I'm jumping ahead a little bit here. But now, like the lady who talked about Class Dojo, uh, this parent wanted to know how their child were doing in my class. They were struggling a little bit. So I called her, I said, listen, will you seesaw? We'll let you know. I interview them after every class. How do we do? Where do we struggle? What do we learn? All these different things. The parent loves it. Now here, check out the assessment part, though. All right, how did you do today, sir? Good. How many warnings? Zero. How many warnings? Zero. Didn't you have one for talking? No. You sure? No. Maybe a half of one? All right. But overall, very, very nice. And tell your mom what you learned today. You want a shower? Shower. No, no, no. Shower mechanical digestion. No. no? Okay. Yeah. Shower it going down, uh, mixing with the amylase, with the saliva. Shower going down the esophagus. Shower it going in the stomach. What's the stomach do? So large intestine. Good. Taking out the liquid. Large intestine. Or small intestine. Good. Taking out the nutrients. Uh, and what's the last part? <laughs> nice. Oh, um, I will be talking to you about the five uh, components of fitness. But so, <laughs> cardiovascular, vascular endurance. Um, well, cardiovascular endurance. It helps your heart and so since it helps your heart um we're gonna wonder to do cardiovascular and to do that to help your heart function when you're older but the thing is 
when you are old. No, um, wait, why is it? Next one, muscular. I don't wait. What? Next one, muscular endurance. Um, well, muscular endurance is how long of a period of time you can hold or lift something heavy or something like that. Muscular strength is how um is the amount of weight you can carry, of course. So, well. Because of that. Wait, what? Wait, what? What? Um, let me fix this. Well, now, body composition is your fat and production, something like that. I think it's protein, something. Well, it helps. So you are not. Okay. Um, well, flexibility is how much you can move around. And you're going to want to do that because it prevents injuries. So, yeah, that's pretty much all. And I want to say... I am, I am a boss. Bye-bye. Right. So those were two videos. The first one is going to jump ahead. That was sort of the parent engagement. So not only that, it's also the assessment. So you saw how I used physical movement as an assessment. Now the parents saw that as well. So we'll talk more about that when we get to parent engagement. The second video that that I showed over there are selfie videos, which are huge. Uh, over there, I gave them the question, what are the five components of fitness? And give me an example for each. They do the selfie videos. It uploads to their, um, to their Seesaw account. Only their parents have access, and, uh, and, and we go from there. So again, if you want, get up on with me later. I have a podcast about Seesaw we did for the Boxcast. It's awesome. I can't begin to tell you how great Seesaw is. And then we talked about uh, RSX. So here we go. Here's a big one for flexibility and responsiveness. Obviously, she's a teacher. Look how flexible she is. When a student asks you a question in the middle that you don't know, what do you do? We stop and we go on the internet and find out. So yeah, I will try to speed through this as quickly as possible over here. So again, teachable moments, stop, hit the internet up, find out the answer, go back. If your lesson's not going well, I'll stop. I'll give them a brain boost so they have a couple minutes to do whatever. And then I will figure out a way to reteach it or what I can do using going to different lessons I have and then go back and start reteaching. So I absolutely love it. So here we are, the last part of the Danielson model. How can we use technology to get better professionally? Again, reflect on teaching. You talked about my blog. I love Blab.im. It's a new social media for, uh, form. That I know, I, that's how I met Peggy, actually. Four windows, Twitter uh, back channel on the side. It is fantastic. So again, get with other educators that are in your field. Talk about what you're doing, what they're doing. That's going to make you better. And of course, we always talk about Voxer and how great Voxer is. Voice message app, fantastic. Accurate records, Google Forms, everything my kids do, I now can keep track of. When we go back to that picture of how much of a hot mess I was when I used paper and pencil, it was crazy. Now with Google Forms, all my answers are saved. Uh, in an easy way. Google Classroom, same thing. The assignments all go to the folder. I know where to find them. My school uses Genesis, which is an LMS. Some might use Schoology's, that kind of stuff. That helps with records. I know a lot of people use Adacio, which is another uh, way to keep records. It's kind of cool. Uh, Plickers, another way to keep easy records. And of course, we talked about Seesaw already. Communicating with families over here. Can you just show this one video? I know we're running short on time, but we pretty much are done. Uh, for the student update, this is huge over here of how I, I tell the parents what we're doing. I make a selfie video, and then I, I go from, from there. So I'll tell them this is what we're doing this week, and then we go. So this is the selfie video right here. And we can stop it after like 20 seconds, please. Hello there, Mr. Schleider here with your update. 
This week in physical education, we will be going over the soccer kick. Um, the ball will be stationary, and the student will be kicking the ball forward. So that is our goal for this week. And then we will work on being a little farther back from the ball, maybe running up and kicking the ball. But either way, the ball will remain still. So that's our goal this week for phys ed. Now for health, we're going to go over gender differences. And we don't go over too much physically. We don't talk about any of that. Uh, the bulk of it will be them trying to understand that there's really very little difference between male and female as in what we can and can't do. So we'll discuss that. And we'll look at gender stereotypes in toys. So that's one of the other ways we'll go over it. And I also have a YouTube video about throwing like a girl and explaining how uh, what how we think about ourselves really can shape the way uh, what we end up doing. So if you would like a copy of the video, please hit me up on Seesaw, and I can put the link in there. It's very YouTube, uh, very easy on YouTube. If you look it up, just look up Throw Like a Girl. It's one of the first videos that comes up. All right. So again, how easy is that? It took me a minute, one time. This, this is what I'm doing this week. Send it out and see. So you can click everybody. Sends it out to the whole grade. So um, when the when the video goes out there, they get notified either through an email or if it's an app on their phone, they'll do it. Um, that's how uh, they they set how they want to be um, posted. There's email, class message, or mine, class dojo, all those things great for communicating with parents. Over here, professional development community, how do we participate? Through webinars like this, Google Hangouts, Labs, Periscopes, and if you need tech right here, use GoFundMe. Uh, some people use GoFundMe to get to conferences. All right, and the last slide we have right here, how are we growing and developing professionally? Boom, Twitter chats, two that I recommend, totally awesome, Weird Ed. They're awesome, awesome, awesome chats. Uh, totally awesome is Tuesday nights at 9. Weird Ed is, I believe, Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Voxer, love Voxer, Voxer P for phys ed teachers. Book studies. I did a, a, I've done numerous book studies on Voxer. I'm doing one right now for TGFU. I did Eric, uh, both of Eric Scheniger's books through Voxer on a book study with Franz Davis, who was one of the, your previous teachers. Uh, I did a book study with her, with her book on there. So again, Voxer's fantastic for a growing professional. And last, but certainly not least, how do we show professionalism? Committees right here. Uh, you can do it to our signups that students can do through Google. Um, over here. Get your resources, use your PLN to find out your resources, how to use your PLN, social media. Be on time. This one's huge. My whole school, I set them up on their mind because I was tired of getting to school and wondering if I missed a faculty meeting. So now I send out a mind every Friday, this is what we're wearing, and then uh, that goes out at 6 in the morning, and also we have a faculty meeting. So that's really cool for there. All right. I know I went a little over the time. Try to make it as quick as possible. What do we have right now for me? I can capture some questions, Justin. Um, let's see. Why do you think phys ed teachers became so organized? This goes back to the what you started with in the beginning. Are there any other subjects sure. that have shared so much with each other? Not maybe to the whole group. Yeah, and, and the reason why I think physical education teachers are social creatures, we, and we also, I, I know this is probably going to set the teachers back, a lot of them did sports when they were younger and excelled mm -hmm. at sports, so now they understand the value of teamwork and how everybody needs to play a role, and together we're better than the individual. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very natural to a lot of us to share, where teachers don't really I mean, on Twitter they share a lot, but in general, a lot of teachers. It used to be a competition, and sharing was seen as as not a value. And I think in phys ed, we definitely love our teamwork, love sharing, and it's more about getting better as a group. So for that's why I think it is. Um, I don't think there's any other groups that have done what we've done to the level, but it's really not hard to start. How hard is it to make a, a free Google account? Call it fifth grade you know, at gmail.com, have a Google Drive, set it to view only, and then get teachers together 
to put them to get access and, and put their stuff in there. So it's not hard. I don't know of any that have done it to this extent, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked, just asked now, how can a particular teacher get access to that? Sure. So um, you, all they have to do is click on that link that, that's in the show notes, and they can go follow my Twitter account. I tweet it out every day because I feel like it's so important. And you don't need a password or anything. You click on it, and you have access to all that for free. And I only it's it's set as view only now because when we had everyone allowed to edit it, we reached the maximum number, and it wouldn't allow us to add anymore. Right. So now it's view only. If you have a really go-getter who wants to add to it, just tell them to direct message me their email, and then I'll add them in uh, so they can make a folder and add stuff to it. Great. How often do you have access to the iPads and Chromebooks for your PE? Uh, my school phones? is one-to-one -one from third grade uh -huh. up, so they bring their Chromebooks okay. down. I have an iPad cart that nobody uses. It literally is housed in my office, which is kind of sad, isn't it? Okay. But I, I literally have access to iPad almost any time I want on there. But again, you don't need uh, as much. You could get away with five iPads in your class or five Chromebooks mm -hmm. and still make a huge impact. Sure. Uh, does the technology take away from your family time. How do you manage <laughs> your people all around the world without affecting or how does it affect family time? Uh, poorly. How do I manage? Very poorly. Uh, right now I'm kind of lucky. My kids are very young. So mm -hmm. they're in bed by 8.30 every night. So afterwards they're, my wife is, is pretty good most of the time about putting up with me and, mm -hmm. and the fact of there. But I got to be honest. Education is a passion of mine, and if it's a passion of yours, then you have to pursue your passion, and something's got to go. So I really don't spend a lot of time with friends outside of the house right now. I used to go to a lot of concerts, you know, go out to adult establishments and stuff, and I don't really do that anymore. Uh, a lot of it's I'm older. I have three kids, mm -hmm. and the time in general is not there. But if you're passionate about something, you make time for, for what you're passionate about. So that's it. And, and uh, a good thing I heard was you set a schedule and you actually schedule in family time, which is mm -hmm. which I know seems kind of silly, but when you talk to a lot of innovators and a lot of people who are, are doing things out there, that's what they do. And they put their phone away, they shut everything off, and they just are in the moment there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Seesaw has a ton of tutorials. If you go to Seesaw dot whatever, they they have it on there. App dot Seesaw dot com, I think. There's a billion diff, um, tutorials out there. And if you want, we could do a hangout. This is the great part about Web 2.0 is you could say, Justin, let's get together. And show me how to how to utilize Seesaw, and we go in there together. Mm -hmm. but, uh, again, I'm not even a Seesaw ambassador. I just think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. You showed us an end of the year student form. Do you have, or a beginning of the year, sorry, do you have one for the end of the school year? I do have one. I have to figure out where it is, so hit me up mm -hmm. later. I will try to mm -hmm. find that on there. And that's usually just a, a quick one of what did we not get there this year that you mm -hmm. wanted to. And, um, I have like three questions because it's just ah. a quick hitter. Uh, I, I like using them during the year and you know, kind of get to know you. And another Seesaw question, do you ask parents to approve using Seesaw? I don't ask them to uh, approve using it because that's how mm -hmm. I assess. Okay. And no one else has access to it. But mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, their videos don't go outside of their, their account unless somebody emails me. Because in Seesaw, you send out an email as a class sign-up, mm -hmm. and then they click on their student's name and then I have to approve them. So let's say that Mr. Smith wants to see John Smith's videos and he wants access to their folder. So mm -hmm. it comes to me, do you want this email address to have access? I look, make sure Mr. Smith is John Smith's dad or mom or whatever it is. And then I hit accept. So it's really, really cool like that. And 
I don't allow them to see each other's videos. Mm -hmm. You can, and they can like each other's videos, all different stuff. I don't allow that because I don't, I don't, for the younger kids, I don't want that. Now, the older right. kids who are on Instagram and Snapchat and all, and they want the world to see them, they don't really care as much. I probably would let it. High school kids, I'd probably let them have access to each other's to see it. And then they could like it and leave comments. But I don't do that at the elementary level. Sure. Do you have any reference about before you're, you were using technology with your students and after? That is, how it affects uh, learning related to your students? Sure. I don't have using data. technology and not? Yeah, I don't have any data unfortunately mm -hmm. to tell you this, but let's put it this way. Before I did it, I wasn't doing a lot of uh, assessments that were student driven or peer driven. Mm -hmm. So it was mostly me assessing and that was it. And I did a lot of direct instruction. Now mm -hmm. since technology, a lot of self and peer assessment. Uh, I didn't even get into some of the more phys ed stuff that you can use technology for. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm much more organized with my data, and I use that to drive my instruction. So for my formatives, if, if a lot of kids are getting it wrong, I might not have noticed before. Now it's it's much clearer. And using Google Forms and their analytics allow me to Great. see when the learning's occurring. Yeah, that, that's terrific. Those were the questions that I was able to capture, and I don't remember seeing any others. And I know we're past yeah. time. Yes. So I think we're going to wrap up. Thanks so much, Justin. All right. Thank your, you. Have your a good day, everyone. Your enthusiasm certainly is visible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pass the mic on to Peggy, who will talk about our upcoming shows. Thank you so much, Justin. You have just filled our minds with great ideas, and your enthusiasm is very contagious. So thanks a lot. Just quickly, want to let you know that next week, we have another great presentation from the Smithsonian Learning Lab, totally free tool that you're going to want to start using with your students. So that's next Saturday. And then our final um, webinar before our summer break is going to be on June 18th and I hope you'll all come and join us because we're going to do open mic sharing that day and we've got some awesome things to talk about and we're going to ask you about what's on your summer bucket list. So start thinking about what you could share and then come to that session and jump on the mic and, and tell us what your plans are for this summer. Then we'll take a break um, from the time of ISTE through July 30th, so then we'll resume on August 6th. So I hope you all come back and join us. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD in one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a classroom like this one. As long as you make your session public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher like Justin was nominated for today's show by filling out the form that is here or it's in the live finder as well in the very last tab in the major tab in the live finder in the resources section. You can also complete a survey about the show today or any of past shows by following this link or clicking the link in the chat box or the link in the live finder. Once you complete the survey at the bottom, you'll see the professional development certificate request. If you do this part, uh, your name will type out on the certificate, please use a personal email address to receive this. Otherwise, it may be blocked. Schools tend to block it. Again, special thanks to Justin for presenting today, for being our featured teacher, to Steve Hargadon the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today, thanks so much for coming. <laughs>